Hello everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to advect an RBD simulation using the velocities from a volume. Let's get into it. I'm going to go ahead and drop down some geometry to fracture, and I'm going to use a box in this case. I'm going to go inside here and drop down a transform, set the display flag to that, and scale up by about 5 on every axis, and then move it up by 2.5, which will allow it to sit squarely on the grid here. Now, I'm going to fracture this geometry. You can use about any fracture method you prefer as far as I know, but I prefer to use a Boolean Fracture, but I do know Voronoi Fracture works also. So I'm going to go ahead and set that. I'm going to go ahead and drop down a Boolean Fracture node, and I'm also going to drop down a Scatter node. I'm going to plug the transformed box into the scatter, and if we set the display flag to this, you can see it's created a bunch of points all over the cube. You can also turn down or turn off the relaxed iterations for a more randomized look. I'm going to leave that on. Now I'm going to drop down a Grid. And I'm going to set this to maximum rows and maximum columns, or 50 in each. And then set the scale to about 30 in both dimensions. Now I'm going to drop down a copy to points node. I'm going to go ahead and plug in the scatter into the right input and the grid into the left. And if I set the display flag to the copy to points, you'll see now that it's copied many planes or grids to the points we scattered earlier. This is not exactly how we wanted to cut up the cube. To fix this, I'm going to drop down a randomize attribute node or attribute randomize. I drop it between the scatter and the copy to points. Instead of randomizing the color, which is what it's set to by default, I'm going to go ahead and enter N, which will randomize the normal. I'm going to set the distribution to inside sphere, which will scatter it a lot more nicely. This, however, I can already tell is far too many uh, cutters. So I'm going to turn down that to about 25. And plug the copy to points into the boolean fracture. Now I'm going to set my display flag to the fracture and see how this looks. Now we can see this is sliced up nicely, however with perhaps too many straight lines. To fix this you can drop down a mountain node, which is essentially just noise on the p attribute which is the position, and you can see that breaks up a little bit. If you want to increase this, you can always come into the attribute, no um, attribute noise node which is the mountain and scale up the amplitude, which will in turn make the lines on the boolean a lot more aggressive. I'm going to leave that as it was. Now we have our fractured cube. Before we create the constraints, I'm actually going to create the explosion next. And the reason that we're setting up the explosion between the fracture and the constraints is so that when we create the constraints, they will automatically set themselves up within the DOP network. This will make more sense in just a moment. I'm going to be using the shelf tools for this, just for the sake of simplicity. I'm going to go ahead to the Pyro Effects tab, and I'm going to select a sparse fireball. I'm going to control click this so it creates it automatically at a world origin. It will create a fireball simulation uh, DOP network and a fireball geometry network. The DOP network is where the simulation will take place, and the fireball geo node here is simply importing the results of the simulation into the viewport for us. I'm gonna dive back into the DOP network. Inside of this is created a very, very simple pyro simulation for us. If we go ahead and press play, we'll see this. I'm gonna jump back into our box object here, and I'm gonna go ahead and set up the constraints now. I'm gonna come up to our rigid body tab, and I'm gonna select RBD glued objects. I'm going to go ahead and click on our box object and hit enter. As you can see, it's created a bunch of new nodes in our fireball simulation DOP network. I'm going to go ahead and hit L to lay that out. And I'm going to also go ahead and rename this just simulations to make that make more sense as it's not just a fireball anymore. In this DOP network, we have both the rigid body solver for the RBD sim and the pyro, and they're working together. Typically, you don't have to have the simulations in the same dot network, but as these are affecting each other, it makes sense. Now, if we press play, you'll see that an explosion happens on our box. However, not much happens. The reason that nothing is happening here is because to break constraints, you typically need an impact force. So you need to drop the object from a great height or to hit it with another object. The explosion is neither of these. So what we're going to do is use the volume to break the constraints and then fling the resulting pieces outward using the velocity. In order to get these constraints to break, we're going to jump into the SOP solver remove broken node here that has created itself. Well, first, we're going to drop down a dot import fields node. We're going to set the preset to pyro and we're gonna go ahead and find our dot network that contains our pyro, which will be simulations. And then the dot node we want specifically in the simulations will be the pyro node. We actually don't need the rest of these attributes. So you can go ahead and turn the import on these off or simply delete them. Now we're gonna drop down an attribute from volume node. And this is gonna give anything inside of 
the volume we plug in here an attribute. The attribute we're going to create here, I'm going to call it explosion. You can call this anything you want, boom, explode, but it's good to just keep it something simple so you can remember it. And we're going to set this as a float and we're going to bring the attribute scale down or attribute size down to one. Now we've got to create an attribute promote node. And we're going to go ahead and select our explosion and set that to primitive on the new class. So we're going to promote it from a point to primitive level. Now we're going to drop down a group expression. Make sure it's on group type primitives. And for the group name, we're going to type in broken. And in the vex expression, we're going to type something very simple here. We're going to do at explosion greater than 0 0.1. All this node is saying is that anything tagged with the at explosion attribute, if it's greater than 0 0.1, which is a very low threshold, it will be added to the broken group, which is a group that already exists. So we don't need to worry about creating that. And we're going to set the merge op to union with existing. Now that means any constraints that are inside of the volume should now break. If we play this, we will see that nothing happens. And that's actually not quite true. If we jump back into the remove broken sob solver, we'll see that it actually does break these uh, constraints. It's just that nothing is getting flung outwards. So they're breaking and just sitting on top of each other. Back in the dot network, I'm gonna go ahead and drop something down that I forgot earlier. I'm gonna drop down the gravity force and a merge node. And into this merge, I'm gonna drop down a ground plane so we can have gravity and a floor for our simulation to interact with. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and drop down a pop and vect by volumes node. I'm gonna go ahead and plug that into the pre-solve input of the rigid body solver. We actually have a choice of a few volumes to advect by, and I'm gonna show you both of them. The first is going to be the SOP level one. So I'm gonna go ahead and find that. It would be under our fireball, and it would be the volume rasterizer attributes one here. I'm gonna go ahead and choose that. I'm gonna change the field name to V, because for this specific SOP node, it uses V for velocity instead of VEL. I'm gonna untick tree as wind. I'm gonna leave it as update force. And for now, I'm gonna leave ignore mess on. If we press play, we're gonna see not very much happen. We're gonna see that it breaks the constraints. And as a result, the cube falls apart, but nothing is flung outward. And that's because if we come back to the pop effect by volumes, that the forces involved are very low. We're gonna have to tweak both of these to see an impact. I'm gonna set both to 10, just to set an example and press play. And now we can see we have quite the violent reaction. Um, we have an explosion, which is exactly what we wanted. In your case, you might have to tweak the velocity scale and the force scale to get a result that's closer to what you're looking for. But if you just wanted to blow up some geometry using the public by volumes, that's exactly how you would do it. Another way you can tweak how your simulation reacts is by unticking ignore mass. And now that will take into account the density that your RBD object has over here in the physical tab, just here. So if we press play with ignore mass ticked off we'll see it's having a much harder time launching the relatively massive cube that i've got set up however if we take this density down to one perhaps we'll see a much different result which is not quite what i'm looking for so i'm going to leave that be at 1000 i'm going to go ahead and tick ignore mass the second volume you can choose to advex your uh, rbd simulation is the pyro we have right here in the dot so we come back to our public by volumes and we select velocity source dot data. It's going to ask us for a node in this very network. And our node here is called Pyro. So I'm going to go ahead and name this Pyro. And I'm going to set the field name to Vel. Uh, those of you with good memories will recall that when we set up our constraints in the dot import field, um, we did not import the Vel uh, attribute. I've re-imported it now. However, if nothing is happening, it's worth coming back into this and re-importing this if you unticked it in the first place. Now back in our simulation with everything set up in the pop effect by volumes, if we press play. We'll see that we have quite the violent explosion because we have our velocities and forces set to quite high. Played around and changed both of these forces to two. And I'm gonna go ahead and press play and see how that looks. If we go ahead and press play, we'll see the reason that I prefer to use the SOP data rather than the DOP data here. As we press play, you can see that as the explosion rises in the midpoint, it continues to bring up uh, new debris instead of stopping after the initial explosion. If you look at this big piece right here, you'll see exactly what I mean. We press play and after the initial explosion, as the velocities of the pyro continue to rise, it will flick up any debris that it catches inside of it, which is not the look I'm going for. There may be a way around this look, but if there is, I don't currently know it. So if you know the proper way to use the pyro vel attribute, then please let me know in the comments. Otherwise, I'm going to stick to using the SOP level of the rasterize attributes. So there we have it. Let's have to advect an RBD simulation using the velocities from a volume. 
I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And if this was helpful, please leave a like and subscribe. Thank you. I'll see you next time.